Join WLJC for our 2014 Spring Telethon. Beginning March 31st through April 12th, we will be live six nights a week from 7 to 10 p.m. nightly as we present the financial needs of the ministry. In the new digital era of technology, WLJC needs your support more than ever to keep up with the changing times and expand into new areas with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This spring telethon will feature performances by many local bluegrass and southern gospel singers. And many of your favorite guest hosts will be reading your pledges of support. Thanks to your contributions, we are able to provide a unique television ministry that spreads the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. WLJC is a ministry for everyone wanting a closer walk with the Lord, including those that aren't able to go to church, those in nursing homes and hospitals, and those that are lost and in need of salvation. Acts 20 verse 35 says, And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words, the Lord Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So join WLJC to help share the love of God to all that will receive. Remember the Spring Telethon will be airing from March 31st through April 12th, beginning at 7 p.m. each night. Go to www.wljc.com to watch live online and make your donation. It's easy and safe. Just click the red donate button on the homepage. Or you may call in your pledge of support to 606-464-3600 or 859-402-0673. Good evening and welcome to the service tonight. This is another night of our spring revival and we know that you're going to uh, be able to join in the service and uh, help us to win souls tonight. That's what we're here for is to tell what little we know about the Lord and recommend Him to you because He's the only one that really can help you. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can heal you. He's the only one that can solve the problems that you're some of you are facing. And so tonight we welcome each of you to stay tuned. We have uh, good singing and good preaching coming up. And so we want to share some, just a few scriptures though because you're going to hear uh, some good uh, uh, message here in a little bit. But Psalms 111, it says, Praise you the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. I like that. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. You know, sometimes we want to serve God with just a portion of our time and energy and effort. But he said with our whole heart. He wants He wants to be Lord of our life. Not He doesn't like second place. He wants to be first in our life. And the works of the Lord are great and sought out um, of them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and gracious, and His righteousness endureth forever. He hath made His wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. His great works to be works to be remembered. You know that's when we hear a testimony. When uh, you know another scripture says, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say so." When He's done something for you, we are to say so. We are to let it be known what His wonderful works. 
He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath shown his people the power of his uh, works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All of his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverence is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding hath all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Psalms 1, 11. And it's just talking about how the righteous are blessed if we remember his covenants yeah. to do it. All right. Uh, we, are, we are going to believe the Lord for some good reports, salvation and healing and so forth tonight. And we have Brother Wayne House is going to be preaching for us. And so... Uh, he's going to bring a greeting to you right now, Brother Wayne. I, um, some words was preaching, but uh, I made mention. I said we got more knowledge, and the Bible even said in the book of Daniel, you know, in the end time, there'd be an increase of knowledge, and we've got more knowledge than we've ever had, but less wisdom than we've ever had because... Don't seem like there's very many people fearing God, but but I'm glad there's still a few. And here's a lady. We, we're going to read this to you tonight. Uh, she called in last night, and uh, they had a replay on on Wednesday night. But she watched it, and she called in from over in London, Darlene, 78 year old, and said she watches uh, every night. Said she was all alone, but she called in and got saved. And I thought, what a blessing that is. That uh, even in a re rerun, a replay, somebody can feel the, the need for salvation. And 78 year old, and I guarantee you that if, she, if you could talk to her, she'd say, boy, I wish I'd have done it when I was real, real young. And, and I've never heard anybody say, well, I wish I never got saved. Everybody always said, if I knew it was that good, I'd have done it a long time ago. So, but we appreciate Sister Darlene, and we'll be praying for her. And I'm hoping there'll be more calling in tonight. And... And, and pray out there, and uh, not, not because I'll be preaching. It, it don't matter who's preaching. What matters is the Word of God. Uh, that's what uh, touched the hearts and help people to to believe. So, so we're gonna claim it. I'm like Sister Margaret. I'm gonna believe. And uh, he said, if two would agree on touching one thing, anything would be done. So we're gonna agree tonight, and I'm believing we're gonna see good things. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad. I'm, uh, today's the first day of spring, and Back in January, if we said, boy, tomorrow would be the first day of spring, we'd have one shouted, wouldn't we? And I bet there's a lot of people already griping about it, you know, stuff. So I'm just glad to see it warm and, and know God's still sitting on the throne of heaven. And, but we want everybody to pray for this service tonight and, and all the needs. There's, there's a whole lot of needs, Sister Margaret. So, but we'll, we'll turn it back over to Sister Margaret. And um, just if you've got a need out there, especially if you're not saved, you call in tonight and... These people upstairs will pray with you and, and help you if, you, if you if you'll call in and let them. So, God bless you tonight. All right. Just before we pray, we have a a, a lady gave me a, it's a baby that's having open heart surgery tomorrow. Holds a hole in its heart, and all she could remember its name was Baby Brown. Its last name is Brown, and so it's surgery in the morning on that little baby. And uh, so she she wanted to be remembered. Brother Wayne, would you lead us in prayer for the service and for those that are really waiting? They're waiting because they've tried everything else. They found they can't get healed. They can't get uh, free from their addictions and stuff without the Lord. Yeah, we also want to mention Brother Bill not able to be with us tonight, and we miss him when he's not here, and we love him, and and he, uh, we want you to pray for him and Brother Rick Alexander Edith's his husband, and he he needs prayer. My little grandson been sick. He had a some shots, and I had a reaction to it, and been running high fever, and so he's just six months old, and so pray for him tonight, so just a lot to pray about. You pray with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we come to you thankful for this day, and 
And we're thankful, Lord, for the blessings of this life. And we know not only are you in the saving business, but you're still in the healing business. And we know the Bible says by your stripes we're healed. And we're thankful for that. And we know that you're going to hear tonight from your people. And I know you're going to answer. You said if we ask, we shall receive. So we ask for the sick. We ask for the afflicted. We ask most of all for them that are lost and undone. You touch hearts tonight. I believe we're going to see good things happen here with your people. I believe we're going to hear from um, people out there that has, has called in and said they've given their heart to you. And we'll give you the praise and the honor. You bless this service, bless this group, and bless every need, bless this station, and Sister Margaret and every, everyone that's part of this ministry. And, and those out there are watching tonight, and we'll bow our heads and we'll give you the praise. In the sweet, sweet name of Jesus, we pray. And amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Our singers tonight comes to us from Liberty, Kentucky, and that's a, that's a good little drive. About how long does it take you? That's about two and a half hours, two hours, four okay. five minutes or more than that. All right. That's a, that's a good size yes. drive. And yes. so we appreciate them. And they, they don't look all worn out from that much. They must have eaten their Cheerios this morning. But anyway, we have the Rogers family from Liberty, Kentucky, and their phone number is 606-787-4414, and they're from the Old Time uh, Independent Baptist Church. So let's welcome the Rogers family right now. Amen. Good to be back with you folks up here at WLJC. A lot of folks down home. Um, listen to the program. I get calls all the time, Sister Margaret, telling about how they enjoy it. A lot of folks down home, they, uh, uh, they like seeing Brother Cecil on there. They uh, enjoy Brother Cecil. Amen. Um, good to know that, uh, that God's working. Amen. And so we want to thank you for the uh, invitation to get to come back and sing. We've been praying that we might be a blessing to someone, maybe an encouragement uh, through song. So uh, this time we'll go ahead and get started. Brittany's going to start us off. And so um, hope and pray that if you're listening tonight, as it's done been said, and you feel the need to be saved, you are to call in. Let someone talk to you upstairs about getting your life straight with God. The most important choice you'll ever make in life, giving your life to the Lord. Mercy, love, and grace 
Thank you, Lord. I'm a trophy of grace, a display of His love. I'm part of the results from an old rugged cross, same with His precious blood. Though I'll never understand why He died in my place, just look at me today, because I can say I'm a trophy of grace. Just look at me today, because I can say I'm a trophy of grace. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God. Uh, I want to uh, take and, well, we got a lot of folks down um, in Liberty that asked us to sing out songs. I want to send this and out to Sister Mabel Minton, um, my aunt, and her two daughters that are listening tonight. Boy, I hope we can be as much of a blessing to them as they've been in our life, good folks. And uh, so I want to send this song out to them. Brittany and Shane will be doing it. I have been blessed. Amen. <coughs> When he walks among us, all that he does, all of his mercy and all of his love, if the pen of the writer could write every day, even this world could never contain just how I've been blessed. The warmth in the winter, the flowers in spring, the laughter of summer, and the changing of leaves. Food on my table, a good place to sleep. Clothes on my back and shoes on my feet. Oh, I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God's so good to me, precious are his thoughts of you and me, no way I could count them, there's not enough time, so I'll just thank him for being so kind, God has been good, so Father and mother who nurtured and raised my sisters and brothers, memories are made. Our pastor to lead us, this altar to pray, stripes that can heal and a blood that can save. Oh, I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good. So good. I have been blessed. We live in a country. Yes, it is. Our flag stands for freedom and what it is worth. She stands in the harbor, Miss Liberty calls. All have gave some, but some have gave yeah, all thank you, Lord. for me to be Amen. blessed. I, I have, have been blessed. God's so good to me. me. 
precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. He's my shoulder to the yes, listen to this when verse. I am down. The rock where he leads me when yes, I'm overwhelmed. The place where he hides me under his wings. He's not just a song. He's the reason I sing. Yes, you're oh, right. I have been blessed. I have been blessed, God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God has been good. Amen. All right. We're going to. Try to do this and for Rose Johnson listening tonight. And so we'll send this out to her. All the folks over on 78 that are listening tonight, a lot of folks over there, we'll send it out to them. Shackled by a heavy burden Come beneath the load of shame then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same he touched me oh he touched me and oh Shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something. Praise the Lord. Brother Preacher, tonight, ain't you thankful that, amen, he touched you one night or one morning, amen, changed your life forever, brother, and boy, I tell you, I'll never forget how he touched my, my heart that night on Wednesday night, 1988, and saved an old sinner like me, I know it wasn't worthy, 
but he still seemed fit to reach down and touch an old sinner like I was and save me. I want to thank him for that tonight and uh, praise him. We're going to try to do this in here for, um, for you tonight. And so I've never had a lot in this world, been a poor boy all my life. But on the other side of eternity, I'm a very rich person, amen. Got a mansion waiting over there, the Savior that saved me, bought me with his blood and redeemed my soul. And so I'm a rich person tonight. Shake hands with the poor boy. I've never had much in this world below, but I'm going to a city where the streets are pure gold. Christ made me an heir, I'm a child of a king. Shake hands with a poor boy who owns everything. Already I'm headed for my sweet by and by. I've been adopted and placed with the king. Shake hands with a poor boy who owns everything. Shake hands with a poor boy. And how do you? going to ask Tony to do one here for us tonight. You know, um, I want to thank the Lord for all my kids tonight. Every one of them loves the Lord and sing for God and play for God. Man, I'm telling you what, I'm a blessed person tonight. And I want to thank the Lord for Tony. Got a blessed, uh, wonderful um, bass voice tonight. He's going to sing the only fire I'll ever feel for you. I send this out to my wife and uh, my two kids at home. <clears throat> there is a place somewhere below I've heard and read about. They say that people when they go can never come back out a place of torment for lost souls who turn their lord away and they say the fire it burns all night because there is no day but I've escaped that awful place when Jesus saved my soul. And not one hair upon my head will into that place go. No, I don't have to wear sin. The Savior took my part. The only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. 
given me when I was born again. Yes. The Lord applied his precious blood and cleansed me from all sin. Yeah, man. He fixed the spark that satisfied my hungry soul's desire. And that tiny flame that's burning now will keep me from the fire. But I've escaped that awful place when Jesus saved my soul. And not one hair upon my head will into that place go. No, I don't have to worry since the Savior took my part. The only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. The only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, we'll send this one out to Mom. We sang it down here a couple, of three times, but she likes the song. She wants us to sing it all the time at church. And boy, since she's got saved by the grace of God, if she wants me to sing it every week, we're going to try to sing it for her. Amen. Prayed for many years before she gave her heart to the Lord. And we're so proud of Mom. I'm thankful I get to go to heaven with her now. Amen. try to do this one for you and uh, I'll tell you what uh, kind of fight we're trying to keep up with what we sing in how we do them and, and um, oh the name of this one is ship from the Kings Harbor Shore 
Just like a ship set out to sea with no one to guide me along, drifting along without direction as the winds grew fearful and strong. I wanted to show the world I could conquer the ways of life on my own but I soon found out that I just couldn't do it I'd never make it alone my ship it wrecked in the midst of the ocean and I couldn't swim back to shore burned and battered by the storm of life till I couldn't take any more. I cried, Master, please rescue me from drowning in this sea. I need you to guide me from a storm, hide me, and all these troubles set free. There's a rescue ship from the King's Harbor shore. Better get on board today. It's the greatest ship that's ever sailed. This ship's the only way to rescue you from the storm of life when you just can't take it. Is the captain on the rescue ship that sails from the King's Harbor shore? Then, in my view, I saw a great ship. It was sailing on the dark waves. It looked so sturdy and so strong as it quickly came my way. With the searchlight brightening so pure and so bright, it found me there just in time. And I knew it was sent from the King's Harbor shore, this poor lost sailor to find. There's a rescue ship from the King's Harbor shore, better get on board today. It's the greatest ship that's ever sailed. This ship's the only way to rescue you from the storm tossed by when you just can't take anymore. Jesus is the captain on the rescue ship that sails from the King's Harbor shore. Jesus is the captain on the rescue ship that sails from the King's Harbor shore. Hey. Amen. We're going to send this next and out to Brother Andrew, probably listening tonight. And uh, Ben's going to sing it for us. I'll stick with the old stuff. Brother Andrew got saved, and, and boy, I tell you, called to preach the gospel, and boy, he loves the old stuff. And so we want to ask Ben if he'll sing this one for us. I also want to dedicate this to my mamma, uh, my mamma Sue, and my mamma Abby. <coughs> Amen. <clears throat> so many religions everywhere say, send me your money. Beyond compare, others say a prayer cloth. That's all that you need. Well, you can have all of that. I'll take Jesus, He's sufficient for me. And I'll stick with the old stuff. It works every time. From Genesis to Revelation. His power divine, and I 
was filled with His Spirit. When He saved my soul, I'll stick with the old stuff all the way till I get home. But so what makes a difference? Yes, listen. Between the Buddhist and me. Yes, go ahead. Simple man, my Holy Ghost can see. Yes, sir. And brother, let me tell you what settles it all is if you go to the grave, there will be a Yeah, man. Cross this river more, and I'll, I'll stick with the old stuff. It works every time. From Genesis to Revelation, His power divine, and I was filled with His Spirit. When He saved my soul, I'll stick with the old set all the way till I get home, and I'll stick with the old Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Shane to do this one for you uh, before we take a break. Um, he's going to sing, He's Still Passing By. When Jesus passed by, the dead would arise. Some that were blind. Passing by, he's still passing by. He still extends mercy today. The blood that he shed on Calvary's tree still washes my sins away. His garment, she was made old. Hey, by him. And he was in by. He still passing by. He still stands mercy today. The blood that he shed on Calvary's tree. All right, thanks to the Rogers family from Liberty, Kentucky, for being here to share their songs with us tonight. Well, just before we go into the preaching, here is a young lady celebrating a birthday we must mention. Her name is Virginia Sloan, and she's from McDowell in Floyd County. And on Monday of this week, she was uh, 103 years of age and said, we are her church. So happy birthday to Virginia Sloan from McDowell in Floyd County. We're glad that we can minister to people of all ages. And speaking of ministering, we, we have Brother Wayne House right now to bring a message for us. He's the pastor of the Lebanon Baptist Church in Clay County. And uh, they have a phone number there, 606-598-3686. So you help us pray for Brother Wayne as he preaches because we know there's 
The word from the Lord is, is something that we all need on a daily basis. So the Lord bless you, Brother Wayne. We appreciate, uh, Sister Margaret, the invitation. Good to be back tonight. And uh, we, we appreciate you watching uh, you out there. And I want you to pray. And be, uh, people out there maybe not saved. You know, the greatest uh, need in any life is the need of salvation. And um, brother was talking about his mother getting saved, and I thought, boy, you know that what a blessing that is. And and uh, we're going to die one day, and we're going to uh, spend eternity somewhere. And we need to make our decision here, and we need to make the right choice in life. So, but we appreciate you watching, and we appreciate the invitation. We'll preach and get out of the way here as quick as we can. But uh, we've been in revival this week over in London at East London. Baptist Church over there, and Brother Travis Baker's preaching tonight over there. We'll be back over there tomorrow night, so uh, if you want to come out tomorrow night over there, you can, and they, they'll treat you real good. But, but anyhow, we want you to listen. We'll read just a couple verses, and we'll get right into the message um, from the book of Revelations. And um, the Lord's put this on our heart, so we're going to preach it tonight, and it's simple stuff. And, uh, you know, we don't get real complicated. We keep it pretty simple and it's easy for everybody to understand. And I believe that's the way the Lord is. I don't believe the Lord's complicated. I believe the Lord's way. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah that it's plain that a man, though he be a fool, need not err therein. And that's a pretty plain way of living, and that's the way God's way is. Um, we'll read here the 21st chapter, the book of Revelations, and the 21st verse, and we'll read down a couple of verses. But John the Revelator wrote this, and he said, The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was as one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it was, uh, were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple there, thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall be in no wise enter into it. And listen to this. Anything that defileth, that also ever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, I'm going to read the, that uh, uh, 21st verse one more time. Listen to this. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was as one pearl. And the streets of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. I want to preach to you tonight. Well, and God put this on my heart. Now, really had never even thought of it like this. But I want to preach you a message tonight. And if I could title it, I'd say, God hung a pearl on heaven's door. And I, I read that, and, and I began to think about what Christ tells us in the Gospels in about three different places. But I'll read to you again. I don't usually read two different places, but I'll read this tonight, one, one verse um, from the book of Matthew, 13th chapter, and see if you uh, uh, understand what he's saying. And he said this, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. And I read that and, 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 and I thought about how that Christ told us in the gospel that he was the pearl of great price. And then we go on into the book of Revelations and we find where John wrote down that the gates of that city was as one pearl. And they were twelve gates. On every gate there was one pearl. Not two and not three, not a dozen, not a pearl for every individual, but there was one pearl. And that one pearl, I believe in all of my heart, represents Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the Gospels how that when John seen Jesus coming towards him, and the Bible said that John came out of the wilderness preaching, and John came preaching a Savior. And John said, John said, Now I'll baptize you with water, but he said, There'll come one after me 
thou that will baptize you not with water, but with fire and the Holy Ghost. And he was talking about Christ. And the Bible said that the Lord came walking his way, and John seen him. And the Bible said that John declared, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was that pearl of great price. And I thought about it in my life. He's the pearl of great price. And he's no different to me than he is to you. He's no different to you than he'll be to everybody else. God only had one pearl. And the Bible tells us that God gave him uh, for the penalty of sin, for the uh, for sin that came by the disobedience of man, how that Christ came down and became uh, that pearl of great price. One pearl, one is an individual, it's singular. It doesn't mean that there's any other way in the heaven, uh, but the Bible said that there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Friend, if you're going to be able to go to heaven, if you're going to be one of these uh, that are found written down in the Lamb's book of life, you must find this pearl of great price. And you don't have to go out and begin to search and you don't have to go uh, to that place over there where he hung and died. And you don't even have to find the grave that he resurrected from. Uh, but God will find you and God will knock at your heart. I'm glad of that. I'm glad that there'll be nobody left out. Uh, but I'm glad that every individual will I find the opportunity in this life uh, to be saved. And I thought about how blessed uh, that we are, uh, that we have a God that loves us enough, uh, that he gave his very best. Uh, God didn't give a, a second best out of heaven. He didn't send a reject or uh, something no good, but he sent the very best uh, that heaven had that we might be saved. And tonight, if you're watching out there, I realize that God uh, expects something out of us. Uh, the Bible declared that at one time uh, God winked at ignorance, but now uh, the Bible said that he uh, demands men everywhere uh, to repent of their sin. That ain't me that's telling you that. And, uh, that's not uh, uh, somebody, that's God's word. And God uh, declared, on the authority of his word that uh, no other name would ever be given uh, whereby men could be saved uh, in my name or your name or anybody else's. Uh, you can never find uh, that pearl of great price, but in God uh, you can find uh, that pearl. Christ himself uh, declared, he said, Now I am the way, uh, the truth, and the life. Uh, there's never been anybody else uh, that can stand and say come my way or come through me but in the Lord tonight uh, you can come and find life I find in the book of John where the Lord said that I am the door of the sheepfold and he said if you come in through that door uh, you can be saved amen that's a blessing from God that's a promise uh, from the most high God uh, friend there's nobody else uh, upon this earth can save you uh, there's never been another name whereby uh, men could be saved. But I read this and I thought about a, a beautiful place called heaven. And uh, when we get there and see that pearl on that gate, it'll let us know that uh, we're going to be able to enter in, uh, not because of denomination, uh, not because of who uh, we might believe in here, but uh, we'll enter in uh, by the pearl uh, that's hanging hanging there on the door of heaven amen and that pearl is Jesus Christ I thought about one and how good it is that it's not confusing tonight to know who we must believe in even Paul said that I'm glad that I know in who I have trusted and 
I read this on down and I thought about uh, that pearl and uh, what it represents. And I, I remember years ago I, I heard a man declare, and I guess he was, I know what he was talking about, but he said to get a pearl, uh, a life has to be given. And uh, a pearl comes from uh, an oyster, and uh, that oyster will uh, nurture that pearl down inside of it. And, uh, to be able to retrieve that pearl uh, they'll take that oyster and uh, pry, it, uh, pry it open and uh, it'll lose its life uh, but a pearl will be gained and that's how we find Christ tonight he gave his life uh, for you and me he didn't just uh, a temporary give him but he gave it uh, 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 forever uh, that we that was lost might be saved amen and I thought about is I thought of a pearl of great price and what it means to you and I. It, it may not mean much to the world, uh, but friend, if you're saved tonight, you know uh, what that pearl means to you. Uh, the reason you have joy in your heart is because of that pearl of great price. Uh, the reason you know that you can lay down on your pillow at night and uh, go to sleep is because of that pearl. Uh, and Jesus said, I am the pearl, uh, the one pearl uh, of great price. And all through the Bible, you'll find people who uh, came and received that pearl. Uh, he knocked on their heart. Uh, the same God that saved me is the same God uh, that'll save you. Uh, this brother that was singing a while ago, uh, he said, you know, talking about uh, salvation, it's the same God uh, that's over there in liberty that's here tonight. It's the same God uh, that's all over the world tonight. Uh, we get confused sometimes and uh, we think there's a dozen in different ways to go to heaven. Uh, friend, there's only one way and that's through Christ uh, that died on that cross. And uh, as I read this, I thought about uh, how God hung that pearl uh, on the door of heaven, amen. And Jesus hung there on that cross. That's the door to heaven tonight. Uh, uh, the door to heaven is coming through the cross uh, where Christ died to give life to them that would believe. I remember uh, growing up when I was just a boy, an old time preachers would stand and preach, and I remember seeing them preach so hard how uh, that sweat would drop off of their arms and run down their elbows and make big puddles in the floor. Friend, we don't preach like that much anymore. I mean, they'd preach till they couldn't preach anymore and declare the word of God uh, to be the unadulterated truth. Uh, in other words, there was no doubt uh, that they knew who they was preaching about and they'd had excitement in their voice. It's hard to hear many uh, today that gets excited, uh, but I'm glad to know that uh, what I'm declaring unto you uh, came straight out of heaven, amen. Uh, John seen a person Pearl, uh, hanging on the gates of heaven uh, and inside of that I uh, was streets of pure gold if you read on the next chapter uh, John seen a river uh, the Bible said clear as crystal I uh, proceeding right out of uh, the throne of God amen a uh, friend it's still there today and the only ones going in is them that'll find that pearl of great price and, and the Lord will claim you and He'll write your name down in the Lamb's book of life. A friend, you might never have your name written here on this earth for it. I might matter to the men of the world. But I tell you what matters is having it written down in heaven, amen. And God will write it down. And it'll be there when you stand before him in judgment. And he'll claim you. And not because you're good. And not because you've been baptized. And not because you've belong to my church or somebody else's but because you claim the pearl of great price he'll claim you I thought that great price what a price it was what a price he gave he gave his life I don't give very much for the Lord to the Lord I'll give a little bit of my time and a little bit of my effort but I think about how much he done for me 
and how much that Christ gave for me. He gave his life. Now that oyster, they say, will sand will come into his its shell and it'll start to irritate that oyster and, and that pearl will start to grow and that pearl will get hard. And it all started because sand irritated it. And I thought about the story that Christ gives in the Bible how the foolish man, he said, will build his house up on the sand. And he said, the wind will blow and the storms will come and great will be the fall of that house. Friend, we're living in a time where the majority tonight is building their house up on the sand. Uh, they're building it up on what they do. It's good to work for the Lord. Uh, but friend, if your goodness could get you in, Christ would have never had to die. Uh, the pearl would have never had uh, to hang on that cross. It took his life. It took his goodness. Uh, the Bible said in the book of Isaiah uh, that your righteousness and my righteousness and the righteousness of the whole world is nothing more than filthy rags in the eyes of God. With that pearl of great price, he came into the world and he was not welcome. He came preaching repentance. He told the scribes and the Pharisees, he said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We live in a time and age where it seemed like the majority don't want to hear about repentance. I know I didn't. When I was lost, I thought, you know, I've not done anything real, 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 real bad. I mean, I was pretty bad to have to get about six or seven reels in there, but that's what I done. I looked around and I said, so and so's worse than me. I'm oh, a friend, that's, uh, that's not how it works, amen. I mean, the Bible said that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, the Bible said there is none good, no, not even one. Uh, even Paul uh, that called himself the chiefest of all sinners. He didn't need saving any more than I did or you do or anybody else tonight. We all uh, need that pearl of great price. Uh, we all need the door to heaven uh, to be opened up and thank God I'm glad that it is. I I'm glad that God didn't just open it up uh, to the rich or the famous uh, but I'm glad that God said let whosoever will uh, let them come and drink of the water of life freely. My uh, friend, it don't cost you nothing. Why? Because uh, that pearl was given by God. Our uh, uh, friend, a uh, life was given. It costed heaven something, amen. Uh, when Christ bled there and Christ suffered there and Christ gave his life there, he didn't have it taken from, from him, uh, but freely he laid it down and he seen your life and my life and the life of the world and he he said, Father, I'll go. If you open up the Bible here in the book of Revelation, you'll find uh, where that life seal there in heaven. Nobody was worthy uh, to loosen that seal. And John said, I begin to weep because uh, nobody was worthy. And the Bible said they looked in heaven and they looked on the earth and they looked under there and nobody was worthy. Uh, but uh, John said, Behold, uh, there stood a lion our lamb as it had been slain from the foundation of the world and he said behold the lion of the tribe of Judah has been found worthy and that's when John looked and seen that lamb a friend he might have been a lion but he was John's lamb and if you get saved tonight a friend he'll be your lamb without spot and without blemish that makes, made himself the pearl of great price that's what he is and I want you to understand right quick before we close a great price and that's something valuable Jesus ain't too valuable to the world he's really not but you know I've visited a lot of hospitals and a lot of places where there's a lot of sickness and trouble and I've never heard one person pray to anybody other than the Lord There'll come a time in every life, friend, where we'll realize how valuable he is. My advice tonight is make sure you realize here in the book of Joel, he said multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And I guarantee you tonight that out there watching and 
There's many of you that you're in that valley of decision. You know tonight that you need something you ain't got. And you may be pondering on what you're going to do next and how you're going to find what you need. My advice tonight is look to God. God provided a pearl of great price. And on every one of those doors, there are those gates there in heaven. And friend, that don't mean there's 12 gates, there are 12 doors down here for you to choose from. There's only one way to heaven, that's through Jesus Christ. He declared himself to be that pearl of great price. One pearl, one pearl, one way, one individual, and that being the Lamb of the Almighty God, the Son of the Almighty God. Now, I, I, I thought, you know, I, I got a little grandson, six months old, and I told somebody I didn't know you could love something that much uh, that quickly. But, friend, you know there ain't no way, Sister Margaret, that I could give that little baby to die for the evil of this world. I've heard people say, oh, I could do that. No, friend, you could not. I mean, the Bible declares that for a good man some might die for but I want to ask you tonight, could you give your only child to die on a cross for the filth of this world, for the murderers and the child molesters and all of the, of the evil that's out there tonight? Would you allow your only child that never knew sin, that had never done anything wrong, to die for the evil of mankind? No, you would not. And even if you had... You would have not had the child that God demanded. He demanded a lamb without spot and without blemish. There's none of us that is without fault. Friend, listen to me tonight. The night I got saved, I felt like I was the most unworthiest person to ever pray. I bowed down there and I cried out like a baby. I did. I didn't go to church that night to get saved. My mom, and she probably sitting at home tonight watching, 88 year old. But they was having revival. This has been almost 32 years ago. We'll be the first day of April. And my mom always would aggravate me to death to go to church. And I'd say, Mom, I'll go one night if you leave me alone. And I didn't go that night to get saved. But when I got there, friend God began to knock at my door of my heart. Conviction fell upon me. That old preacher stood there and he preached. And I thought at the beginning that he was about as foolish as anybody that I'd ever seen. And they may be some out there, I hope there's not, but they may be some think, out there think I'm foolish, but friend, I'm not. I, I'm telling you what God has put on my heart. But before that preacher got done, I, I realized he was not foolish. But I realized that I was the one that was foolish. I had built my house upon the sand. And friend, God said, it'll fall. But the wise man, he said, will build his house upon the rock. That's what that pearl of great price be becomes in our lives. It becomes the rock that will never fall. He said the wind will blow and the storms will come. And he said that house will stand because it's built upon the rock. Friend, you build your house upon me and it'll fall. You build your house upon any denomination or any church or any preacher or anybody anywhere in the world. And friend, it'll fall. But you build your house, you build it upon that Pearl of great price. And friend, when the storms come, not elf, but when they come, they'll stand the test of time. We will pray and, and we're going to turn it over to Sister Margaret. I'm going to pray with you. And I want to see you get saved tonight. I, I prayed all day in my spirit and I said, Lord, I believe there'll be many watching tonight that need you. Lord, let them, let them believe in that one pearl of great price. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for that pearl. We thank you that it's just one, not any other one other than Jesus Christ. He's the one. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I'm the vine. I'm the door. I'm the, I, I, I'm the water of life. I'm the bread of life. I, I'm, the, I'm uh, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I am that, that uh, bright and morning star, the root of David, the stem of Jesse. He continued to tell us that he was the way. And Lord, he's that one pearl tonight, a valuable commodity. A life had to be given to attain that pearl. And Lord, he's that one pearl of great price. Lord, those out there watching tonight, and, and, and I know, 
of that many, 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 many souls, Lord, needs to come and find him and find the surety of salvation. And Lord, the Bible said that you'll write their name down in the Lamb's book of life and we hold that dear tonight. I believe there's going to be people who get saved. I believe they're going to claim you. I believe they're out there tonight that, uh, Lord, uh, that they're saved, but they're going through battles. I believe there'll be people tonight that'll read and dedicate their life and realize you're real tonight, God, and you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We leave everything in your hands. You bless tonight, Lord, and we'll bow our heads and we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. For in the sweet, 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 blessed name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Wayne House, pastor of the Lebanon Baptist Church in Manchester, Kentucky. And if you'd like to get in touch with him, 606-598-3686. And uh, uh, be sure and uh, contact him. And uh, if you need a church home in that area, well, that would be a good place to go. I believe we have time for a couple of more songs if the group has uh, uh, any more prepared. They uh, have driven a long way to be with us tonight, and we appreciate that. Uh, a good family group, all, all family. These are all uh, a father and, and the children, and uh, the mom is back there with the uh, directing traffic. So uh, the Rogers family from uh, our Liberty, Kentucky, we're happy to have them. And uh, so now if, uh, if you need to call, go ahead. We've still got a few more minutes, and... Uh, They'll be glad to hear from you up there on the on the phones. Right now, the Rogers family from Liberty, Kentucky. Enough, uh, enough preached there to save the whole world. Amen. <laughs> and uh, boy, blessed message. I'll tell you, thank God. We're going to sing, take a moment and live. <clears throat> no no hymn song and so we'll try to do that there's a city of gold across the river when i reach it i'm told i'll live for him my soul will flower chili jordan over jordan on the wings of a moment and live. Amen. That's what folks need to do. Amen. Oh, 
All right, we're going to try to do this one for you. <coughs> I just stopped by on my way home. My life has been blessed in so many ways with family and friends day after day, but I can't say. Amen. The old altar song. <coughs> the service is nearing an end. The choir is singing just as I am. And now as the old song is played, People at the altar kneeling down to pray. Some are finding mercy, forgiveness for their sins. And some are fighting battles and they're struggling to win. The time has come to give them to the Lord. And that's what this altar is for. And that's what this altar is for. And you don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. And there's a love that is true. And Jesus is waiting. He is waiting here for you. Go quickly now before they close the door. And that's what 
A mother kneels beside them, thanking God they've come. An old man is standing there in tears, giving up a part of him that he's held back for years. Hearts are being broken while lives are being changed. And those who call upon him, they will never be the same. The time has come to give them to the Lord. And that's what this altar is for. That's what this altar is for. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness, and there's a light that is true. And Jesus is waiting, He is waiting here for you. Go quickly now, before they close the door. And that's what this altar is for. And you can give your burdens to the Lord. That's what this altar is for. From... Um, Liberty, Kentucky. Get in touch with them at 606-787-4414. And we have some wonderful news to share. This is shouting news. Brother Wayne. We got several here. Um, um, Betty from Winchester has called in, said she had um, got saved tonight. And Menifee County, uh, Murray said, uh, called in for her husband and said he was 71 year old and said he had uh, got saved tonight. So praise the Lord for that. And Merle yeah. from Somerset. Uh, got saved tonight and yeah, also right. got a, one here that's rededicated her life. Maud from Pike County said she wanted to get her life straightened out and rededicate it back to God and said she done that tonight. So, yeah. right. so that's good news. Amen. Yes. 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 The Bible yes. said it's uh, cold water to a thirsty soul so it's good news from a far country. So that's good news. And we got a couple birthdays here too. We want to mention uh, these. Uh, Anna from Clay, uh, Clay City, 88 year old. And so we want to wish her a happy birthday. And um, Francis has called in from Rockcastle County for Ain't Irene. And happy birthday today to her. She's 93 year old. So uh, my mom's 88, so I like these older ladies. So uh, I tell somebody I go to the nursing home and they think I'm, uh, some, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread. And young people don't like me much, but these older people, they like me because I'm old fashioned, I guess. But. But anyhow, I love them, and I, we love you tonight. Praise God for you. And I just believe, you know, there's ever been a time, Sister Margaret, people need to get their mind on God. It's time we're living in. There's uh, so much trouble out there and so much distress and everything, but we know God's still in the healing business. So we got a whole bunch here. We read through these, me, me and Sister Margaret did, and we, we looked through every one of them, so we, you can rest assured we did. And we're going to put them together, and we're going to pray for all these. And you that uh, said you got saved, you, you, you find your church, get in there and get baptized. I mean, you know, after you get saved, you need to do that. You need to join a church. And, and uh, when you're not at church, watch on WLJC. That'll keep you straight if you do all that. So trust in the Lord. Amen. You pray with us tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings of this life. And thank you for this group tonight that's drove so, so many miles to come and sing for you. And we ask you to give them safe travels home. Give them souls for their labor. Bless this uh, service. Bless your word as it goes out there. You said it would not return void. And we know that. So we praise you for that tonight. We ask you to bless the revival the rest of it here and everywhere they gather and all the many churches that revival will be going on this spring and summer. You blessed and give souls for the labor. Bless the telethon coming up. Bless this station, Sister Margaret and the staff, and keep them all strong and in good health. Bless your people tonight. Let us be in one mind and one accord. 
And we make you a promise. And Lord, we'll bow our head and we'll give you the praise for it all in the sweet name of Jesus, we pray. And amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you so much. Uh, there's, there, in the request tonight, there was a lot of folk <coughs> having uh, surgery, many of them with cancer, brain tumors, and all, all sorts of really serious needs. One family said they just desperately needed prayer for their family. And, you know, that could mean a lot of things. Yes. And so I'm so glad that the Lord understands us and knows what we need. And he knows how to fix it. Many times we pray for one thing, thinking that's the root problem. But many times it's not. Maybe it goes deeper. Maybe it's a spiritual need that needs to be taken care of before, before he blesses you financially or whatever. I don't know, but he does. And he knows if you are willing, he'll work with you. Oh, all right, uh, Brother Wayne, you've, uh, you say you're in revival over at... Yeah, over in London this week, over at East London Baptist Church, uh, where Brother Steve Smith's pastor. We've been over there this week. And uh, Travis Baker, a young preacher from Corbin, is preaching over there tonight. And we'll be back over there tomorrow night. And I hope they let me preach over there tomorrow night. I'm looking to want to, so they may be tired of me. I don't know, but... But we've had a good week and good people over there. I was thinking, Margaret, I mean, the most amazing thing. Well, well, you, you know, a lot of times we'll tell people, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And they'll turn around and do it, and then we'll think, well, I told them, so that's good enough for them. I'm glad God's not like that. Because oh, yeah. God told me many, many, many years, don't do that, don't do that. And then when I repented and asked him to forgive me, he did. He didn't say, no, I told you, and it's too late, but he said, I will. And so if you, if you don't know the Lord, it's not God's fault. And I don't believe you can blame um, Sister Margaret or this station here. It goes all over the place around the eastern, southeastern Kentucky. And praise the Lord for that. It's such a blessing. And, and you know, people know what they need to do. And so they, you need to do that. You need to take care of business and sleep good. Hey, man, you go to bed and sleep good. Uh, you know, when you get saved, I was lost. I never slept good. And I got saved. I sleep good now. So... Praise the Lord. So, But it's good to be here. We appreciate this station. and I know um, telethon's coming up and it'll be a busy time. and We're going to try to come and help at what we can. And So I enjoy it and we look forward to it, hearing from people. And the, the, I'll say this. And the greatest thing to me about this ministry is how there's so many people involved in it. It's not one person or one group, but it's everybody coming together. And you may not be able to give much, but you, you, if everybody gives what they can... And I believe we all could give more than we do, but if everybody gave what they can, God will put that together and it, it'll be enough. So everybody pitch in to help us and, and get it took care of. That's, that's good, uh, Wayne. And uh, I, was, I was going to remind you, <coughs> we will be reading the names this year of the, of the folk that call in. So if you need some practice, you better get practicing <laughs> because we'll be expecting you to help. And... Uh, no, we, uh, we do have some that might not be able to come and help, and so we'll, we'll all do what we can, and the Lord will... I, I'll say that, I don't mean it, but I, I thought, you know, when, when you do that, and, and I know names ain't important, but, but a lot of times I think maybe people just feels like, you know, when they hear their name, it makes them feel more like yeah, I'm a part of that, and I want everybody to know I'm a part of that, and I'm not ashamed to be a part of that, and... I, I, I think maybe that's what a lot of people want because they want, they're proud to be a part of WLJC. You will not believe the people that I meet out there that comes up and say, tell Sister Margaret we love her and tell, tell them how much it means to us. So, you know, I am um, just believe God's going to bless in a great way. Yeah. Well, we, uh, uh, we're, that's what we're praying for. And, uh, you know, he's kept us going here for a long time. And so uh, we're... Our trust is still That's in right. Him. That's right. Well, we appreciate and thank the Lord for everyone that uh, helps in any way. If you cannot do anything but just pray That's for right. us, that means so much. And you know, the Lord knows what we can do. He knows when we have done all that we can do, and He knows when we uh, still have a lot of room to move up and do better. But well, like, like Wayne said, I'm glad that He doesn't hold it against us when we make bad choices, Amen. but Praise he forgives us. All right, our time is gone for tonight, so thanks to everyone for being here, and from all of us, we will say good night and God bless you.
Come. And every time you ask me 